Hello students, uh, we are going to study about nitric acid and a study of compounds. First is the discovery. Alchemists called nitric acid aqua fortis. Aqua means water, fortis means strong. So, meaning strong water. Glauber prepared nitric acid by distilling nitre. Nitre is potassium nitrate with concentrated sulfuric acid and hence it was called as nitric acid. Cavendish determined the composition of nitric acid. That is what nitric acid is composed of. The next is occurrence. Nitric acid occurs in free state and in combined state. In free state, nitric acid is formed during lightning discharge. That is, nitrogen in the atmosphere combines with oxygen to form nitric oxide, which is further oxidized to nitrogen dioxide. This nitrogen dioxide dissolves in the atmospheric moisture in the presence of oxygen to form nitric acid in free state. We can see here the tremendous energy which is released by, uh, by the electrical discharge breaks the strong bonds between the nitrogen atoms. So, in a molecule of nitrogen, there are two atoms of nitrogen. Between two atoms of nitrogen, there is a triple bond. So, a lot of energy is required to break this bond, causing them to react with oxygen. Thus, nitrogen combines with oxygen during lightning to form nitric oxide. The nitric oxide formed combines with oxygen or further gets oxidized to nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen dioxide readily dissolves in water and also combines with oxygen present in the air to form nitric acid. So thus nitric acid is formed during lightning discharge. So we studied about how it is formed in the free state, now in the combined state. It is found as minerals like sodium nitrate, it's called common name is chili salt petrol and potassium nitrate it is called bengal salt pet or nitre so nitre means potassium nitrate so first we will study about the laboratory preparation of nitric acid you can see the diagram this is the retort and it is connected to a round bottom flask which is kept under a tap and it is fixed to a stand so, in the retort is taken potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate and concentrated sulfuric acid is added to it. So, when it is heated below 200 degrees Celsius, the reaction takes place producing, if it is potassium nitrate, produces potassium hydrogen sulfate and nitric acid. Or sodium nitrate is taken, then you get sodium bisulfate of sodium hydrogen sulfate and nitric acid. Nitric acid brown fumes you can see here. These fumes pass through this retort and then it is collected in the round bottom flask and uh, water is poured to, so the vapors have to condense. So therefore, cold water is poured over this round bottom flask. The brown vapors condense as nitric acid. And concentrated nitric acid is used, not any other acid because it is a strong non-volatile acid and it is capable of displacing Volatile nitric acid from potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate. So, sulfuric acid is used because it is a strong non-volatile acid which can displace a volatile acid from its salt. That is potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate. Concentrated hydrochloric acid is not used because it is volatile itself. Hydrochloric acid is a volatile acid. A volatile acid cannot displace another volatile acid from its salt. So, therefore, it cannot be used. The reactants that is potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate and concentrated sulfuric acid are taken in the ratio of 1 is to 1 because sulfuric acid is a dibasic acid. That is, it has two replaceable hydrogen atom in its molecule. So, an acid salt is required to be formed. You can see here KHSO4. H when it is present, it is an acid salt. So, we need to get an acid salt, not the normal salt. So, that is the reason why the reactants are taken with the ratio of 1 is to 1. An acid salt is required to be formed. The complete apparatus, the whole of the apparatus is made up of glass because the vapors of nitric acid are highly corrosive. Here, even the lid, the cork, 
it is not made out of cork or uh, wood it is made out of glass that's the meaning of here saying that the complete apparatus is made of glass because if you use a wooden lid or a cork it can get affected by the vapors of nitric acid because it is highly corrosive the temperature of the reaction is maintained below 200 not above 200 to about 200 is not used since they may cause these are the reasons why about 200 degree celsius is not used the first reason is it may damage the glass apparatus if you heat it about 200 degrees the glass apparatus can may be damaged and further the nitric acid which is formed may decompose back to nitrogen dioxide so therefore the temperature is maintained below 200 degrees celsius and if you use above 200 degrees celsius then there is formation of a uh, normal salt which forms a hard crust which sticks to the glass and cannot be easily removed so these are the reasons why temperature has to be maintained below 200 degree celsius then the color of the pure nitric acid differs from the color of nitric acid obtained in the lab so when we prepare nitric acid in the lab it is slightly yellowish brown in color the reason is nitric acid is not very stable it easily decomposes even at ordinary temperature which results in the formation of nitrogen dioxide which is a reddish brown gas so that remains dissolved in the acid imparting imparting yellow tinge to the acid so what happens if nitric acid decomposes it produces nitrogen dioxide which is a reddish brown gas so this gas remains dissolved in the acid giving a yellow tinge to the acid that's the reason why the nitric acid which is prepared in the lab is slightly yellowish in color this yellowish brown tinge in the acid can be removed by bubbling air or carbon dioxide so which drives out nitrogen dioxide gas from the acid or it can get oxidized to nitrogen dioxide to nitric acid so by the by this way we can remove the yellow tinge of the acid or it can be diluted with water add water to the acid which causes dissolution of nitrogen dioxide gas so the yellow tinge will be removed nitrogen dioxide will dissolve in water to form nitric acid Next is the preparation of nitric acid by Oswald's process. This is the industrial method of preparing nitric acid in large scale. The diagram is just for representation. Uh, it is not there for you to uh, study for the exam. It is just to represent, just to make you understand the diagram is given here. You have to only remember the three steps, the conditions required for this reaction and uh, the equations first is step one there are three chambers you can see the first chamber is called as catalytic chamber so here catalytic oxidation of ammonia takes place so the reactants here taken are pure dry ammonia and dry air you can see ammonia one volume and air is taken 10 volumes and it is passed through this catalytic chamber and the temperature is maintained between 700 to 800 degrees celsius and the reaction you can see ammonia gets oxidized in the presence of a catalyst platinum to produce nitric oxide water and you can see 21.5 kilocalories of heat is evolved so it is an exothermic reaction the products formed as nitric oxide and steam 95 percent of ammonia gets converted to nitric oxide the remaining five percent is burned to nitrogen and steam Then step 2 is the oxidation chamber. You can see here oxidation chamber. Here oxidation of nitric oxide takes place. Nitric oxide is oxidized to nitrogen dioxide. The temperature is reduced to 50 degrees Celsius here. Otherwise there can be a decomposed reverse reaction taking place. Therefore the temperature is reduced to 50 degrees Celsius in the oxidation chamber. Step 3 is the absorption tower. You can see the absorption tower here and water is sprinkled from top 
nitrogen dioxide is converted to nitric acid in this chamber by the absorption of water in the presence of excess air. So in the first step we studied 1 is to 10. The reactants taken is 1 is to 10. That is 1 volume of ammonia and 10 volumes of air. The reason is air is required in all three chambers. That is oxygen is required in first chamber, second chamber and the third chamber. That is the reason why 10 volumes of air is taken. And you know only 20% of air is oxygen. So nitrogen dioxide to nitric acid by absorption in water in the presence of excess air takes place here. So forming nitric acid. This reaction takes place at ordinary temperature. So you can see here water is on top from the top of the absorption tower water is made to spray and then the gases which passes from down from here that is nitrogen dioxide combines with water further gets oxidized to form nitric acid and you can see nitric acid is tapped out from the outlet and this method is called as Oswald's process and it is large scale preparation of nitric acid or industrial method of preparing nitric acid. Now, next is chemical properties of nitric acid. First is there are a lot of uh, reactions given in your textbook. Only the ones which are given in the scope of the syllabus is required for you to study. So I have taken only those here. Only these are required for your examination point of view. First is oxidation of non-metals. Non-metals like carbon and sulfur are oxidized by hot concentrated nitric acid. Dilute nitric acid will not combine with non-metals. So remember it is hot concentrated nitric acid. Carbon combines with hot concentrated nitric acid to form carbon dioxide, water and nitrogen dioxide. So carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide. Sulfur combines with hot concentrated nitric acid to form sulfuric acid, water and nitrogen dioxide. The reddish brown gas is produced. So sulfur is oxidized to sulfuric acid. So you know that. Nitric acid is an oxidizing agent. Therefore, non-metals like carbon and sulfur get oxidized. Carbon gets oxidized to carbon dioxide. Sulfur gets oxidized to sulfuric acid. So this is one of the questions asked in the board paper. Volatile nitric acid is used in the preparation of non-volatile sulfuric acid. So name an acid which is prepared. The non-volatile sulfuric acid. So that is nitric acid is used in the preparation of sulfuric acid. The second is oxidation of metals. Here metals, uh, three metals are discussed in your textbook but we have to learn only about copper. So cold dilute nitric acid reacts with copper to form copper nitrate, water and nitric acid. Note the difference here. When it is cold dilute nitric acid, it is nitric oxide is the gas produced. When you use hot concentrated or dilute nitric acid, it should be hot, concentrated or dilute it can be. When you use the product form is nitrogen dioxide. This is the main difference between these two reactions. That is when you use cold dilute, the gas produces nitric oxide. When you use hot concentrated or dilute nitric acid, the gas produces reddish brown gas nitrogen dioxide. Both equations are very very important. And test for nitrate radical. Nitric acid contains nitrate radical. So how to test? This is called as brown ring test. This is just the representation and this is the original experiment conducted and you can see the brown ring being formed here. So here is the representation of brown ring test. You take a solution of nitrate or dilute nitric acid in a test tube. You should take nitric acid or any nitrate like sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate solution in the test tube. Then to it add freshly prepared ferrous sulfate solution. Why freshly prepared ferrous sulfate solution? If it is prepared and kept, it gets oxidized to ferric sulfate. Then the reaction will not happen. 
the test will not answer. Therefore, we have to freshly prepare ferrous sulphate solution should be added. Add concentrated sulfuric acid from the sides of the test tube. Slowly you should add concentrated sulfuric acid. It is being heavier, it will settle down. Cool the test tube thoroughly from outside under a tap. After adding all this, cool it under the tap because the reaction is an exothermic reaction. Keep the test tube aside for short time. You should keep it without disturbing it for some time. Then the reaction takes place and a brown ring is formed between the junction of the two liquids that is ferrous sulphate solution and sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid heavier so it settles down and ferrous sulphate is above sulfuric acid and in between these two, the junction of these two liquids, a brown ring is formed. This brown ring is called nitrosoferrous sulphate. A brown ring of nitrosoferrous sulphate is formed at the junction of the two liquids. The formula is FeSO4 dot NO. So you can see here a brown ring is formed. So this shows that nitrate is present in this solution. Then heat on nitrates. This uh, part of it is important because it is based on practical chemistry. You have a lot of observations to be noted here. So nitrates behave differently on thermal decomposition. Different nitrates give different products. So it is very important. Alkali metals like potassium and sodium nitrate on heating gives nitrite plus oxygen. So the gas evolved is oxygen here, not nitrogen dioxide. Normally when a nitrate is heated, a reddish brown gas, nitrogen dioxide is evolved. But in the case of potassium and sodium nitrate, you get a nitrite and oxygen gas being evolved. Nitrogen dioxide is not evolved here. Then heavy metal nitrates like lead nitrate, copper nitrate, zinc nitrate, all these nitrates when it is heated, they produce metal oxide oxygen and nitrogen dioxide. So when lead nitrate, the color of lead nitrate is white because it will be asked in what do you observe questions. So lead nitrate which is white in color on heating decomposes to produce a lead oxide that is buff yellow in color. Don't combine and write the word. It is two different words. Buff yellow. So white color lead nitrate decomposes to produce a yellow color lead oxide that is buff yellow and you get oxygen with nitrogen dioxide reddish brown gas nitrogen dioxide is evolved then copper nitrate which is blue in color on heating decomposes to produce copper 2 oxide which is black in color with evolution of a colorless gas oxygen and a reddish brown gas nitrogen dioxide if you have taken zinc nitrate which is white in color on heating will decompose to produce zinc oxide which is yellow when hot white when cold with the evolution of nitrogen dioxide and oxygen then heat on ammonium nitrate and ammonium nitrite nitrate is not in this lesson just for a comparison i have taken both together so that you know the difference so heat on ammonium nitrate when ammonium nitrate is heated it gives nitrous oxide it is also called as laughing gas and water paper. When ammonium nitrite is heated, it gives nitrogen and water vapor. So the difference is nitrate gives nitrous oxide, nitrite gives nitrogen. So with this, uh, we complete nitric acid.